This is the uh, vanguard circle of the Jewish Socialist Bund. And this is a forum that is available for the Jewish Bund to talk to you about what has been happening over the last week or so, because we are a weekly and will continue to be so, especially in this time of crisis. I, speaking, am Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, PhD in political science from the University du Québec à Montréal. My thesis is available on academia.edu, as are all of my writings, all my books, both English, Arabic, and French, as well as the articles, essays, journalistic articles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but there's important matters that we have to present to you with the perspective of the Jewish Bund. First of all. The big clown Trump has made two uh, gestures and notes that nobody has bothered to notice. First of all, after a shard of glass uh, struck his ear from the side, after a bullet hit the teleprompter, glass panel. Hello, you know, like he's uh, being whisked off the stage and he gives his uh, fist uh, pumping in the air, you know, just to, to be a kosher populist. But as he's going down the stairs, you know, he also gives a Nazi salute. You know, perhaps involuntarily, but still that. Then, in a speech the other night, the other evening, to the Republican National Convention, he talks about the unity of the United States of America. One United States, one America, he calls it America, when it's actually the United States of America, because America includes Canada and Mexico, and he cannot be the president of all three. So, <clears throat> he starts off by saying, you know, that he's for a united, unitary America, with one faith. He doesn't say faith very, very uh, succinctly, but that's what he said, one faith. What faith is, is that? Is that Christianity, perchance? Is that Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of um, the United States of America and Lord over all of its people and Lord over the whole world? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, that's what he's talking about. So, you know, like... No change. Still a fascist. Whether he can get away with it is another matter. Fascists don't have power because they want power. Fascists only get power because they're given power. We'll see, you know, what the American people are, are up to. It's, it's supposed to be very, uh, a, a very sort of uh, honest and common sense people. Let's see what that turns into. Because common sense is a word. It's a term that... Uh, even Trump uses. Okay, that's the uh, first and most important matter to be noted this week. Then there's uh, a bunch of other things that have been happening. I'd like to show you on a share, share screen here. And here we are. Okay. Ah, here we go. Now, let me show you this. Ah, first of all, okay, let's start with this. Now, this is a letter written by a 10 year old girl who's going to a Hebrew school here in Montreal, okay? And she says, dear ancestors, she's talking about Jewish ancestors, okay? You know, the ones that she reads about, you know, the history classes and the Torah. I wish you thought just a little differently so you can't have 
taken over Palestine land. If you didn't, I wouldn't have been mad at you. I understand that you might have needed land or whatever, but taking land that isn't yours isn't okay. That's like if I said, somebody had a cute little puppy and I just took it because my parents wouldn't let me get one. Brackets. True story, by the way. Close bracket. Like, that's not okay. Please think before you do something. Now, thanks to you, there is no Palestine. A plus leads to some people. I hope this letter teaches you something about not stealing people's things. Like it, you want a puppy so badly. Just, just bug, oh yes, bug your parents. I hope they listen. Mine never do though. See you in the future. From your future. Relative, relative may be. Emily, Emily Weiss actually is her full name. Okay. You know, this is what's happening. And the new generations are going to wipe the slate. The older generations, even if they're a lost cause, <clears throat> how much control do they have left? 10, 20 years? Then, whoa, check this out. This is a revolt of the Jewish Haredim in Palestine, occupied Palestine, who refused to go and fight and kill Palestinians. Okay? They happen to be Jewish, not Zionists. You know, as I said to uh, one Hasid who passed by in his truck when I was doing a vigil at the Jewish community campus, and I said to him in Yiddish, in Senayidin, Nish Tsioinim, and he loved it. You know, he just sparked, you know, it just sparked him. Okay, that means we're Jewish, not Zionists. I got to show you this. I got to show you this. This is incredible. Check this out. This is a demonstration, okay? Peaceful demonstration. We don't want to know. Thank you. Yeah, okay. You know, like, just men. You know, like, double that with the women. We refuse to serve an army. Yeah. Okay, now, Netanyahu has a coalition of 64 seats in the Knesset, which includes two Haredi parties, which are non-Zionist and refuse, you know, conscription for their members. Okay? So that coalition is gone. That government is gone. But nonetheless, he doesn't even need a coalition, but, you know, because all the Zionist parties, you know, vote the same way. They had a resolution, you know, saying that they refused to recognize uh, the West Bank as a Palestine state. A two-state solution or two-state pro process or anything, you know? No Palestine, nowhere, no way, no how. And they voted, all the Zionists, you know, parties voted in favor of their resolution, except for nine Palestinian Arab Israelis, you know, representing various parties. There is a deep split happening here. So what are they going to do? Drag the Haredim into the military? Huh. We will not go into the army, I think I said. And then they also put up Palestine flags, you know, all over the place, in Mayor Sharim neighborhood in Jerusalem. And even the rabbi says so. Don't go. You know, Former chief uh, Sephardic rabbi says, you know, leave, just leave the country. You know, you can't go in the military to kill Palestinians. It's not allowed. Uh, one Haredi soldier. <laughs> Maybe a few more than one. But that's all. I'm kind of not getting any more. Yeah.
That's Gaza for sure. For sure. Crimes of India. Good one. Okay, now check this out. Uh, okay. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Like before. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> This is from my Facebook page. And uh, you cannot uh, join in because I've reached my 5,000 person limit, but you can still read the public stuff, you know, all of which is, all of what I post is public in any case. Now, let me show you. Um, yeah. Now let me show you something else here. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Yes. Here they are. Check them out. This is Ansar Allah. This mass movement of revolutionaries has liberated their own country, or pretty well half of it. They've taken on and hit 107 ships transporting goods for on behalf of the Zionist state, 107, you know, they've shut down the place and the port of Eilat is gone. And now they've just sent a drone that has evaded the Iron Dome system and it has hit Tel Aviv, you know, with a bomb. Not just, you know, any location in Tel Aviv, you know, they weren't targeting civilians, no. They went for the American consulate or American embassy, whatever it is, you know, who knows, you know, they're supposed to have moved to Jerusalem, but they call it the American embassy in Tel Aviv. Okay, fine. <laughs> and they nearly got it too. You know, just the incredible stuff is happening. <clears throat> now, in order to make things happen, you have to have Two things, program and a strategy. Strategy to know what you want to do. No, a strategy on how to do what you want to do. Program is what you want to do, and a strategy is how to do what you want to do. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in terms of a program, there are serious lacking, uh, lacking programmatic aspects of the uh, Palestinian Solidarity Movement, which has to be addressed here. Now, even the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court have missed this point. The point is that the Zionists have a rationale which is based upon the principle of universal national self right to self-determination. Okay? Because Jewish people are an oppressed nation. You know, it's not just the Zionists contend that Jewish people are an oppressed nation before them. The Jewish Bund also explained to the Marxists, the poor Marxists who cannot see oppression when it's right before their eyes. Uh, well, Jewish people are an oppressed nation and have a right to national self-determination. The Zionists exploit this to mean that they can do whatever they want. And if any other people are seeking their self-determination as well, are in the way, like the Palestinians, then they can be ignored and removed because the Jewish right to national self-determination comes first. Why? No reason. <laughs> no reason whatsoever. You know, <laughs> because a right to self-determination is a universal right based upon principle of reciprocity. That means a right applies to all nations, you know, not just one or two, it belongs to the national rights of all nations. You know, otherwise, there's no reason to support national self-determination for any one nation either. 
That makes sense, doesn't it? It's called the principle of reciprocity, which means that no right is valid unless it is supplied in a universal way. So, that's one point. Two, Jewish people are a nation, a people nation. Before there were nation states, there were nations, because the nation state was only invented in 1648 by Hegel, after all. You know, like, get real, you know. Self-determination doesn't mean a nation state. It means the security of a nation. How can you achieve that? by mutual security with all other nationalities in the same position as you are. <laughs> That's the way to do it, obviously. You know, because if you want self-determination for yourself, you have to support self-determination of another nation, and that nation, of course, will support your right to self-determination because they want their own right to self-determination respected as well. It's something called mutual aid. You know, something the anarchists talk about. It's true. That's the only way to work things. But in more rigorous scientific terms, it's called the principle of reciprocity. Because that's the only way that things work. So that's basically, you know, like what's wrong with Zionism. Not because it considers the Jewish people to be a nation. Not because the Jewish people need to have national self-determination. Not because the Jewish people uh, cannot assimilate and, and have to and are obliged to remain uh, with their own identity because neither in the is not only loved, but it is forced upon us. You know, even those who were assimilated in Germany didn't even think they were Jewish. They were, <laughs> you know, they were, and they were told so, and they suffered the consequences just as much as any other Jewish person. And as well, you know, all you cool creatures out there, you know, stop using the word Jew. It's an insult. Anybody calls me a Jew is looking for a fight. You know, it's an objectification of a person. A person is not a Jew. That's what the Nazis called us when they put the yellow stars on us. It said Jude, J-U-D-E. What does Jude mean? It means Jew in English, you idiots. Stop using the word Jew. Because every time you do, you're going to get denounced by me. And who am I? I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor with my mother who escaped from the Warsaw Ghetto with her brother who was a partisan, was the first front line fighting the Nazis invading Russia. And my father, also an anti-Zionist, was Judaic, Orthodox, you know, very simple, you know, like you cannot be Jewish and be a Zionist because, you know, Zionism just is a replication of Protestant Christianity and it's crusader mentality, which is what the Zionists are all about. You know, they're a bunch of mercenaries, paid, very well paid, not in money, but in bombs, you know, new currency, you know, between the United States and Israel. You know, there's the happy currency, you know, 2,000 pound bombs when they're happy with Israel. And then there's the, the concerned uh, currency of 500 pound bombs, you know, in the United States supplies the Zionist state. And, uh, then there's all the rest of the stuff there, you know, like, which is, you know, like, keep it going there, you know, like for the United States of America and its, uh, and its threats to all the Arab states. And, and you certainly will be useful if there's any revolution happening anywhere, such as in Egypt, when Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal. Who jumped in there? England, France, and the Zionist state. Oh, yeah until they were told to get lost, you know, because there was nothing in it for the United States. <laughs> yeah. Now they're planning with the United States to build another canal there, <clears throat> Ben-Gurion Canal, right smack through gas, you know, like just wipe it out and then pick up all the gas from offshore undersea uh, gas resources, you know, which amounts to like about $500 billion, you know, like 1.3 trillion cubic meters or something like that. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Zionism is a business. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with defending the Jewish people. <laughs> and they certainly demonstrated, you know, when they used the Hannibal Directive. They couldn't care less, you know, about Israelis. They'll go and take out as many Israelis as necessary in order to get to a few Hamas fighters. Why? Because they're revolutionaries. They're resisting. 
just like George Floyd, you know, when he moved his arm a little bit, you know, like, and he was, you know, killed because he wouldn't stay still. Even when an autonomic, you know, nervous system is going to jerk, you know, when you're hurt. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference to them. Palestinians are hurting, so they have to resist. Especially after the provocation. What provocation? The Zionists say, no, there was no provocation. You know, they just did this out of the blue. Okay. Does anybody remember the Great March of Return? When all the Palestinian civilians went into a peaceful march to the frontier with the border of the Zionist occupied state. Okay. Now, here I am. Okay, so every day for about a whole summer, you know, the civilians were marching towards the fence, not with any arms, unarmed. You know, and they were shot down by snipers. You know, the one day that I remember in particular, there were 62 Palestinians shot down by snipers. Children, aim, and and that's not to mention, you know, all the uh, people who were handicapped who were shot in the legs, <clears throat> who had to have their legs amputated. <clears throat> I myself was shot in the leg one time, not by a bullet, <clears throat> but by a rubber bullet, which hit me in the lower tibia. Because uh, I guess they were hoping that it was going to break the bone and I wouldn't be able to walk anymore and I wouldn't be able to come to Palestinian demonstrations anymore and sound off about being Jewish and Yiddish. Oh, that's disturbing the soldiers. They can't have that, you know, like it's confusing them, you know, because they're supposed to be there to defend Jewish people. And here I am, you know, a Jewish person who's more Jewish than they are, who even speaks Yiddish. <laughs> so, you know, they shot me. Well, okay, I admit it. I was taking a video. Quel crime! What a crime that was! Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so Zionism. Now, here in Montreal, in the, in the uh, Jewish uh, area of uh, Montreal, where I was uh, holding a vigil every Sunday at the Jewish Community Campus, hmm. they have a, a member of parliament that represents them and voted into office, you know, as a Zionist, as a as a mega Zionist, who was supporting the genocide in Gaza, and when Canada decided that they would refund UNRWA, the United Nations Ref Refugee Relief Organization, so that the Palestinians in the refugee camps in Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, and Gaza could eat, and he voted against that. This guy, House Father, is his name, you know, real Jewish name. <laughs> <laughs> like these Zionists, you know, they they play both sides. You know, they play and they look assimilated, change their names, and then they come on, you know, like super Jewish, you know, like uh, because they're trying to justify Zionism, not because they're Jewish. They're using Jewishness to justify Zionism, to justify genocide. And they'll turn up with every sort of cliche in order to do so. It's just incredible. It's like they've gone uh, erotic. They can't accept the truth because they think that that would mean abandoning their Jewish identity because that's what they've been told, not only by the Zionists, but by the Marxists. <laughs> oi, oi! What a mess. Ah, okay. I think that's enough for today. 